What's going on, gang? Today, it got even weirder. In this weird economy, because I checked the unemployment numbers for April, um, about 2 million people got laid off in April. About 2 million, right? However, we have businesses struggling to find people to work. You have businesses that are shutting down, not because of the pandemic, because they cannot find people to work. I was doing some research and story after story of business owners. Uh, one lady set up 15 interviews, two people showed up. No call, no show. Another uh, business owner set up interviews, same thing, same thing. And this is something that I know is true because typically during good times, no pandemic, if you scheduled 15 employ 15 interviews, you can expect a 50% no show, no call rate. And this was good during good times because people are very different than they used to be. Used to be if you set up an appointment, an interview, you show up. Not so much today. And I'm going somewhere with this. Um, recently, someone took issue with me posting a picture in my comments about the fire movement. And this, this is going to dovetail. This, this uh, worker shortage in the fire movement is going to dovetail. Essentially, we live in an information economy. And there is a lot of information out there that you can make money and not work that hard. I'm going to admit that there can be a lot of truth in there. Honestly, um, I don't really work that hard. Uh, doing what I do, essentially before I got into starting this car business, I was working maybe 20 hours a week, making six figures a month. So it is true and it's not true. Here's the thing. You got to build the machine. And building machine takes time, effort. I remember, you know, years on YouTube where I was working 70, 80 hours a week. And during those 70, 80 hour weeks, I learned a lot. So it can be true, but here's the thing. The thought process out there is you can somehow skirt avoid the hard work that you can um, get around the hard work segment of society. And from where I stand, whether it's investing, whether it's starting a business, that foundational hard work cannot be avoided. Now, with that, we have a bunch of people who feel that they can invest by crypto and they don't have to work that hard. This is a big, big belief, big, big belief. Now, where does this factor in with the fire movement? Same mindset. I don't want to work. I want to have freedom to do what I want to do with my time, which I understand. I totally understand. I have freedom. I don't do things I don't want to do. You know, I will like, let's go ahead and talk about this car business. The car business has a lot of aspects that I am not really happy with, but I will do them because I know once I get this thing built, then I can go back to my happy, cushy life. But I understand during the building phase, I'm gonna have to do a lot of stuff I don't wanna do. It's just part of life. It's just how adults get down, right? And many people 
in the fire movement, because I'm going to start doing some reactions, this one girl, she actually put out a really reasonable expectation. She's in the fire movement and it's going to take her 17 years to get where she wants to get. She's 38, so she's going to be 55. This is where most of the people who are in the fire movement are going to end up. It's going to take 17, 25 years, which is still faster than normal retirement of 60. Because she'll retire um, nine, 10 years earlier than someone who's on a normal retirement track of retiring at 65 or even 69. But all of this is driven by, I don't want to work. So you have this, the beginning of the socialist segment of society. There are businesses out there that are closing. There are businesses out there shutting their doors because they cannot find enough people in a pandemic where people are getting laid off. See, here's what I think is going to happen. Right now, you know, unless you're in the state of Georgia you know, or the East Coast with this gas pandemic, that's going to cause a lot of problems for Uber drivers, door dress drivers, anyone that needs gas to do their job. That's going to be a big, big problem. Hopefully we get that solved real soon. But I am beginning to see the merger of the get over economy and the socialist economy. Because at the end of the day, it is the same driving principle. I don't want to work. I want to do what I want to do with my time. Right now, you have a bunch of people sitting at home, getting this government money, smoking weed, playing video games, and giving big booty Betty the D. And this is all they're doing. They're not writing books. They're not creating great artwork. <clears throat> they're very, very non-productive. And non-productivity is gonna become a habit for this segment of people. These people are going to be the party segment of society. The party segment of society. And this weirdness ain't going to end no time soon. We could be living in this weird bubble for two years. Now, here's where things are going to get very, very slippery. Unemployment is not an endless supply of money. During the last recession, the Great Recession, 37 states ran out of unemployment money, okay? And if you didn't know, the federal government has an unemployment reserve. So 36 of these states had to go to the federal government to get money for the unemployment programs. So we have an accelerated burn rate of unemployment money. And then we have the additional $300 on top of that. That's the cake, right? So at some point, this money is going to run out. It's going to run out. And they're not going to be able to get this government money. And they're going to be forced to go back to these low wage, disgusting jobs. But here's the thing. What's happening in this space right now? Automation. Automation is happening like you wouldn't believe. And many of these jobs in two years will no longer exist. You're going to have a restaurant owner that they're going to redo their whole plan. They're going to install automation where they can get by with less employees. So these people are literally shooting themselves in the foot because automation was coming anyway but because business owners are struggling like right now this deal with the gas 
there is a shortage of fuel truck drivers. A lot of people don't want to drive a gas truck. I, I don't understand. Well, actually, I do understand that. I don't want to drive a truck. It is very unappealing for me to be out of town two, three, four weeks driving a truck or to, uh, you know, from my days of driving uh, <clears throat> a box truck. You know, I had to drive a box truck in the storage auction business and man, people on the road be acting ill. People on the road, you know, I, I used to drive that box truck very slow because I would have people jump in front of me. It, it, it's just very, very stressful driving a truck. So I, I can understand why uh, people are having issues with driving trucks and why they don't want to drive a truck. I, I totally understand that. But this whole get over economy, socialist agenda, um, it's going to backfire on the, that, that strata of people in society because one of the things that's going to happen is automation like right now let's talk about me building this car business i gotta do a lot of stuff right now just to get it built because it ain't built um i've gotten a lot of information i'm in a really good situation i'm just in the holding pattern waiting to get these titles and let's talk about that um someone one of my there are people who claim to like me but they're really haters and one of my haters was like talking about, I don't know if it's real if he has a fleet of cars. I currently own 10 vehicles outright. And when I get the title, I'm gonna do a video showing all of the titles. I have three of the titles. I'm waiting on seven of the titles. And here is one of my biggest challenges making you believe in you. One of the reasons I get so much hate and have so many haters is many of you don't feel that you could do what I've done. So you feel it's impossible and this is why you're going to pour your little pity parties and leave these little hateful, passive aggressive, moist comments in the comment section. And you're gonna hate so hard that when one of the people who get it debates you in the comments and like bro you are wrong then they're gonna call them a drone because they don't agree with your moist butt I mean every day I'm blocking 10 20 people every day I'm blocking 10 20 people because a lot of folks don't believe in self and I was homeless I was homeless most of you are not homeless. And I got to this position in life from being homeless because I believed in myself. And more importantly, which is the general theme of this video, I put in the work. This right here, this thing, like I, I, I keep telling you, I keep telling you, Put in the work, do the work, do the work, do the work, and you will get the benefits. And so many of you don't want to do the work. There is a segment of you who do want to do the work. There is a segment of you who are doing the work, and kudos. In two, three years, you will really see the rewards. So my hat's off to you guys. But a lot of you, just simply because of the crypto marketing department and the... Uh, stock market marketing department has so many of you gassed up that you could just deploy like let, let, let's just keep it the buck you're not going to become a millionaire deploying a thousand dollars in a year or two you're not even going to become a millionaire deploying a thousand dollars over three decades it ain't happening it ain't happening but so many people feel that through options trading that they can deploy a little money and get massive returns. 
And this message is all over the internet. It's all over social media. So when I say, look, you're on a three year journey. You gotta build your business, you gotta work out the kinks, and in three years, your life will be radically different than it is today. Compare and contrast that message to, bruh, you can take $2,000, put it on the Tesla option and make $78,000 in a month. Who, who, no one wants to hear the three year journey. Three years, man, that's a long time. That's a long time, G. I mean, my man over here, he did some options. He made $30,000. He took this course. He made $30,000 his first month after taking this course. Bruh, I'm going over there. I'm going over there. I mean, I like you, G, but $30,000, 30 days? I'm with that. I need to hit a lick like that, bruh. So you're being confronted with all of these messages and the democratic powers that are in control of the government right now ain't helping. When all of this stuff comes crashing, when real market force um, policies and their when fundamentals come back in, it is going to be, I feel, a depression. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, the longer a person experiences a certain type of event, such as unemployment, long-term unemployment, each month that you stay unemployed, you become more unfit to work a job. It gets worse and worse and worse each month. And we go two years with a bunch of people who have not worked in two years. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. This is one of the reasons that I keep a girlfriend. I know that if I went 10 years just doing me, doing what I was doing, I would be unfit to be in a relationship. You want to know why? Because I haven't been in a relationship in 10 years. I haven't been in a relationship in 10 years. <clears throat> I've actually forgot how to have a relationship. I've actually forgot how to be in a relationship. I forgot actually how to date. I actually, I mean, a lot of things happen when you um, opt out of certain things. So these people who are not working, who refuse to work, because they're on the government titty, they're gonna screw themselves in major ways in the future. Major screwing them themselves. Now, let's talk about the fire people who are more productive, who have a different mindset, but the same core messaging of, I don't want to work. I wanna do what I wanna do. And honestly, a lot of these personal finance YouTubers are straight up lying to you. They're straight up lying to you. This is why I created Savage Finance to tell you guys the truth because they're lying to you. There are many people out there who are getting messaging that you can become an investor and essentially become a millionaire in three years. That is the messaging. And this girl, who has a million dollar net worth, she's buying real estate in California. Her first real estate property, 3 x in price, and that is the bulk of her net worth. So, you know, when you, <clears throat> if you're not in California and you're buying real estate and you're doing exactly what she's doing, you're not gonna get the same results. It's not gonna happen. But the, the moist dude who, you know, it is funny how I can show you guys receipts and there are still people who refuse to believe because you can't do it or more importantly, you don't feel that you can do it. You feel that all of this is not beyond you. 
you you I mean I, I actually kind of look at who I used to be I kind of go back and look at how I used to be before I got all of this knowledge and I'm gonna tell y'all something and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed of this because this is how much of a a punk I was I used to hate Michael Jordan I used to be one of those people that refused to give Michael Jordan his props Mike Jordan ain't that good that was me back in the day when I before I be, begin to experience success I was a hater I am deeply ashamed of that time in my life because now I have this new knowledge and I can reflect and I like man you were just a little bitch and this is how I know how you guys think who come after me with these passive aggressive moist comments you're in that same space that I was like this guy he got so motivated he did a video I just put up a meal and talked about like I've talked about this several times I'm not going to live like a monk today so I can live like a monk in the future that's what many fire people do they live on very limited income they're super frugal they watch every penny and then when they get to their fire number they're still living the same way that ain't my ideal of living and you know well you know if you talk about you I'm not putting them down I'm stating my opinion <clears throat> based upon 22 years of being an entrepreneur and making money and that ain't the way I'm gonna live I don't think that you should live that way either I don't think so I don't think that's a good way to live but I used to be a hater I used to be that person like Michael Jordan ain't refused to give Michael Jordan his props just absolutely you won't know why because I wasn't successful I didn't feel that I could become successful I did not feel that I was worthy of success I had a lot of issues and this is why I really started working on mindset I need to get back to that because mindset is the root of everything um, when I changed my mindset and when I got a handle on my inner emotional moist male because essentially I was socialized to be a beta male cuck that's how my mother tried to socialize me and we just we just kept button heads because my inner alpha was just like there's something wrong with this there's just something wrong with this and fortunately for me I had enough alpha traits to push out of the bail made a cuck social conditioning I'm about to say something that's gonna crack y'all up our society would not work without beta male cucks you're like what wouldn't work if everybody was an alpha male this is what alpha males do alpha males pump and dump alpha males be like I don't care if you're pregnant and be off on to the next one our society would literally fall apart if we had a bunch of true alpha males our society couldn't couldn't stand that they couldn't deal with that so we need this is why I never really go off on the beta male cucks because they're needed we need this guy who's gonna marry this single woman with two three kids by two three different dudes and make her an honest woman we need him and fortunately I would say maybe three to four percent of males are true alpha males it ain't that many and then there's a larger contingency who have alpha male traits and beta male traits and there, that's a larger contingency there but at the majority most men in Western society are beta male cucks the majority 
And for the system to continue to work, they have to be. They have to be. So <laughs> that's, that's a little social engineering for you. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy. Because essentially, I know my experience when I was deep into my male beta cuckness, how I hated on Michael Jordan, how, and part of it was from envy, jealousy. I was just like, how does this dude, how does he get all this? And to make matters worse, I used to work with a girl who was cousins with one of Michael Jordan's teammates and every time they came to town, they would go out and I heard all of these stories. Michael Jordan is 100% an alpha male. If you miss the pass in practice, Michael Jordan might be subject to punch you. See, this is where Michael Jordan's greatness came from. It wasn't because he was so great. That was part of it, but his greatness came because he made everyone around him perform at a higher level. That is true leadership. When you can not only perform at a high level yourself, but you can seduce, encourage, and manipulate the people around you to also perform at a high level. Steve Kerr, Mr. Three Point. I mean, I remember one game where Steve Kerr was losing his mind. I think this dude had like 10 three-pointers. Every time he was like, boom, 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 boom. Three pointers, Steve Kerr, Scottie Pippen. That crew was was just reckless. That crew was amazing. And once I began to understand success and understand, like, here's another thing, and I discredit Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was an extremely hard worker. He was an extremely hard worker. Michael Jordan worked on so many aspects of his game. When he got in the league, he didn't have that jump shot, but he developed it, which came from thousands of hours in the gym. So he was an exceptionally hard worker. And I just didn't want to give dude credit because I was a moist beta male. I just didn't. And I'm, I'm ashamed of who I was at that point in my life because I was raggedy. I was raggedy, y'all. The way that I thought, the way that I acted, and because I didn't have this knowledge, I didn't have the tools, and I was just a hater. And that's how I come at you guys the way that I do because I know that you are haters. You're not trying to be constructive criticism, your ass is a moist beta male. You're a hater. You're a hater. And it cracks me up when, well, I'm not a hater, but <laughs> anytime a sentence starts off, I'm not a hater, it's usually a hater. Now, here's something else as a follow up to my Elon Musk video. I've seen several people that talked about Elon Musk is a tool for the elites and it is his role to crash cryptocurrency. Which if Elon Musk and Tesla sell Bitcoin, it's going to crash hard. It's going to crash hard. I was having a conversation with someone in the comments. Do you know that before Elon Musk bought Bitcoin, Bitcoin's market cap was 600 million. Bitcoin, Elon Musk by himself added almost 500 million to the market cap of Bitcoin. Excuse me, 600 billion, sorry, 600 billion. So, um, Elon Musk added 500 billion to the market cap of Bitcoin. And here's the thing. Elon Musk is the poster boy for Bitcoin. Well, he, 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 he kind of is 
because there's a lot of people who are not happy with Elon Musk at the moment. They're not happy with him. But we will see what will happen because these uh, analysis, they were different from my analysis, but we come to the same point that Elon Musk is the front boy to create a control mechanism for cryptocurrency. Do you know Microsoft has a patent for cryptocurrency that operates on body heat and things that you do? So when you're on the internet watching a video or whatever, you're, you could be mining Microsoft cryptocurrency. The stuff that's gonna come in the future is literally gonna blow your mind. It's gonna blow your mind. But, yeah, man, one of the things that is um, really interesting, I have an imaginary fleet of cars. I did not pay cash for the Porsche or the BMW. I don't live in the million dollar house. I don't make the money that I make because the beta male cucks don't see themselves doing it. So therefore, they see me as like being like them when I am a 100% different kind of creature. I'm out here starting a new business when I got money. I don't have to do that. And I, but because I understand the process of building a business, you know, I understand it takes time. I understand it's gonna be hard. I understand it's gonna be challenging. I understand that process. So I know what it takes to start a business. And I know in the beginning, it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be rocky. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of undesirable outcomes that are gonna happen. Like right now, I'm in a holding pattern. Uh, right now, I've got three of the vehicles in my driveway. Um, and I'm gonna sell the Range Rovers, the Porsche, the BMW. I'm selling them. I'm gonna sell them or trade them in. And I'm gonna to move to a cheaper car and put them on a higher car. So this is what I've learned in a few weeks. And it's kind of funny. I feel that Turo is going to be swamped. This time next year, it's gonna be real hard to make money on Turo, in my opinion. In my opinion, I could be wrong. But I'm just looking at, I have three cars on Turo and the only car that consistently goes out is the Porsche. Which, you know, and I almost bought another one. But it would have been like $53,000. And even if it went out all the time, it would take three years for it to pay for itself. That's way too long for my business model. That's just way too long. Um, the way the Porsche was going out, uh, but it's fixed now. Um, it'll pay for itself in a year. So I'm trying to stay away from three and four year uh, repayment cycles. That's just, that's, that's just too long of a timeline. And also with these cheaper cars, I'm going to shorten the repayment cycle because if I get a $6,000 car, right? which is a challenge. Right now, the, the used car market is on fire. Um, little did I know what I was getting myself into. Um, I get a $6,000 car and I make $800 per month if I, I'll make $950 per month if I use my own insurance versus hire a car. So let's say six months, that car is paid for, right? So at that point, I could sell it for whatever and whatever I sell it for is 100% profit. Give me two G's down or on a $6,000 car, I'll probably say give me a thousand. So that thousand dollars would be profit. And then monthly payments will be profit. And if they wreck the car and the insurance has to pay out, that's all profit. So essentially, that's gonna be my business model. And I'm gonna turn this into a seven figure business in about 18 months. 18 months, 
starting from July because once again, right now we're running tiny experiments. Uh, we're learning a lot of stuff. I'm gonna write some Craigslist ads and create a wait list. So I got a lot of stuff I gotta do. I'm still waiting about my office. I'm still waiting on some quotes for commercial insurance. And you know, essentially, uh, if I'm waiting for people who are on the East Coast, some of these people may not be able to get to work next week because uh, this pipeline issue. This pipeline issue is deep. This pipeline issue is substantial. So we've got that that we need to work with and deal with. And um, yeah, it is, um, it's pretty crazy right now. It is pretty crazy what's going on. And essentially, we're going to see a reshuffling of society because this is one of the things that I think that's gonna hit. If we go to a two year period, two years, right? Where people have not been paying their mortgage. This is going to be very, very bad. Uh, one option is they'll, they'll just refinance. They'll just take these people and put their payments at the end of the mortgage and, and just keep on as going on. I don't think that's going to happen. And then, I mean, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. We have people who could be working, but don't want to work. It is crazy. And that's going to be a very big story in the future. The number of people, because like I said, fire people, uh, the people in the socialist agenda, and I've gotten comments like, hey man, um, if these employers would pay more money, and here's the thing with that, the employers are gonna have to pay more money than what these folks are making on unemployment to lure these people off of unemployment. And I'm not talking about like a hundred bucks. Let's say, I, I don't know, what is unemployment? 300 bucks a week plus the 300, so that's 600. So they're making like $2,400 a month just sitting at home. To lure these people out, they're gonna have to make 3,500, 3,600, in many cases, 4,000 bucks per month to lure them back to work. And in the fast food industry, the margins are not that good for them to pay those kind of wages, which is why automation is about to be rampant. Automation is about to be on steroids. Automation is about to be bananas. Automation is going to be nuts because this is automation was already coming. These jobs were going to disappear anyway, but they're going to disappear much, much faster. You're going to go into a McDonald's in the future and there ain't going to be nobody at the counter. You're going to input your order at the kiosk and there'll probably be two or three people back there cooking food and you're going to input your order. They're going to get your order. They're going to make your order and it's going to go on the conveyor belt and you're gonna wait like two, three minutes, and then your order's gonna slide on the conveyor belt. There will be no one to take your order. Uh, many McDonald's, I think, already have like this kiosk. There will not be anyone at the counter to take your order. It's gonna slide by on the carousel, and you're, you'll be able to get your drink, self-serve on drinks. That's gonna be the McDonald's, the Wendy's, the Arby's, the, um, what's that? Zaxby's, that's the chicken place. That's gonna be the fast food restaurant of the future. There will not be, you won't see nobody. You will walk in there, do, 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 do. Punch your order in the kiosk and get your food. There might be someone there to mop the floors. 
but I feel, I don't know. I'm just guessing, I don't know. I think the average fast food restaurant has a staff of about 15. That's gonna go down to three. And it's just gonna be the cooks. And because they've gotten rid of all these other people, they will be able to pay these cooks more money to get them in there. And they're gonna be in there just cooking and putting their food on a tray <clears throat> and sliding your food on the conveyor belt. That's gonna be the fast food restaurant of tomorrow. Or I should say in about two years. Now that's one innovation that I can see happening very, very quickly because of automation. I can see it happening very quickly because these business owners need solutions. I can see that happening really, really quickly. So that I can see. And um, yeah, it's gonna be very, very interesting going forward. So I'm getting ready to do some new training, getting ready to put out some new stuff. I'm going to do a whole video on it once I work it out, work up and get the outline and everything together. And uh, I'm going to be dropping that very, very soon. So if you are a member of the corporate toolbox or the art of holding, you will get this new training. And you don't have to worry about paying any more money. You will get it. So with that, I will see you guys in the next one.